back to Out of the Box with Christine, the podcast for conscious entrepreneurs. I am your host, Christine Blasdale. Yes, your very own podcast for passion and profits coach, as well as a number one Amazon bestselling author. Welcome aboard, my friend. It's going to be an amazing ride. I will be your tour guide on this epic adventure with our ultimate goal being transformation to our highest potential. And now let's get out of the box. Hello, everyone. I'm Christine Blasdale, and thank you for tuning in today. We have a very special program with a very special guest. Dr. Judith Orloff is my guest today. And of course, she is the New York Times bestselling author of The Empath's Survival Guide, Life Strategies for Sensitive People Thriving as an Empath, and also the book Emotional Freedom. Dr. Orloff is a psychiatrist, an empath, an intuitive healer, and is on the UCLA Psychiatric Clinical Faculty. Dr. Judith Orloff has also been called the godmother of the empath movement, which I love, Judith. I, <laughs> I, think, I think of you as my little fairy godmother in many ways. Um, <laughs> and, and Dr. Orloff passionately believes that the future of medicine involves integrating all this wisdom to achieve total wellness. Of course, her work has been featured on the Today Show, CNN, Oprah Magazine, the New York Times, USA Today, you name it. Um, Dr. Judith Orloff is someone who is near and dear to my heart as well. And she's here today to talk about the empaths, the tools that we can use as empaths to get through these critical, strange, strange times. Welcome, Dr. Orloff. Thank you. It's so great to be talking to you again, Christine. Uh, it's a perfect time to be talking to you, I, I believe, um, as we are witnessing the world. F I mean, who knew what, like two years ago, if we said this was going to happen, people would say, you can't, that's not even a, a movie. A movie wouldn't even make sense like this, right? That's too unbelievable. But here we are. And obviously people have been affected by what's happening with COVID restrictions, um, disconnection, but also for empaths and for people that have empathic qualities, we are feeling a lot right now, right? Oh, we're feeling so much. I know as a, both a psychiatrist and an empath, I'm feeling so much throughout this time. I have so many mixed feelings and things are, are changing. You know, as an empath, I've enjoyed the isolation. Yes. And I, I've enjoyed, I'm used to staying at home and writing. So that's my lifestyle anyways, but I've really enjoyed the lack of traffic um, in being inside, not having so many people around. You know, I, I live in, in Venice. So it was like LA, I think in the forties or fifties, it was, nobody was out and it was delightful. <laughs> so in that respect, it was delightful, but in, in that respect. respect, you can feel the, the universal consciousness, the what's happening around the globe. You could feel that. Yes. And the connectivity that has been enhanced that a lot of empaths, a lot of people are feeling how we're ever the more aware of how connected we are to all of our human family. Um, and I think that's a giant lesson in all this. And when we feel that connection, we don't feel so alone. As I know a lot of empaths, a lot of people have been feeling lonely and isolated and strange as a bizarre reality and perhaps too connected to the news and media, which can really throw an empath off and, and drain you. So, you know, I've had, and, and I've also worked with a number of empaths who've gotten COVID and helped them to recover, um, which is, you know, quite intense for them. The ones that I, I've spoken to have had serious cases. So, you know, getting them back into shape and feeling well again, you know, in terms of being an empath, everything we experience as empaths is amplified. It's like holding something with 50 fingers instead of five. And so we feel things very intensely and all the more reason to ground ourselves, set good boundaries, whatever your boundaries are. I know mine have been changing during this time. And to set good boundaries, work with the people pleaser inside of yourself that doesn't want to set good boundaries because you want everyone to like you, which is impossible. Uh, and so you have the opportunity to, to do these practices. And I know in my life, 
I've really upped my meditation practice because I've really needed to connect with what my values are, my heart, my energy, and not get swayed by all of the massive amounts of fear and grief that's around us. Well, and as we're talking about empaths now, you know, I know um, what an empath is and um, because I, I feel that I am that very much that as well. Can you explain though to our listeners who are not familiar with the term um, exactly what is an empath? What, what is this empathic quality that many people have but are not aware of? An empath is somebody who's super sensitive and there are emotional sponges where instead of just observing the world, they actually absorb the emotions and the different experiences into their own bodies, which can be a blessing or a curse. Um, if you're around positive energy, empaths can absorb all the compassion, all the love, all the friendship. Um, there are such things as animal empaths who love to be around animals and commune with animals. And so there's a lot of positive energy you can absorb. Um, however, there's also a lot of um, negative energy in the world. And empaths tend to absorb the suffering of the world or the suffering of other people or the suffering of animals. And unless they have the skills, which we'll talk about and is offered in the Empath Survival Guide online course that you'll be giving away, um, you'll absorb these energies and get tired and get sick and get all these mystery symptoms. And so it's important to be able to center yourself to let go of whatever negative energies you pick up and always ask yourself, is this emotion mine or am I absorbing it from somebody else? Empaths have to train themselves to ask that because most of us weren't brought up with the idea that we could actually take on the emotions or the energy of everything around us and that emotions are contagious in a very real sense. Science has proven that, that in the workplace, if somebody comes in and they're panicked that they're going to lose their job and they keep expressing it and expressing it, that panic will spread across the whole workplace. And the same is true, and empaths will absorb it. Um, the same is true with energy or emotions that are in the external world or even at home. A lot of people are cooped up at home having to be with relatives that they're not used to spending that much time with. And they don't have their alone time. So as empaths, we need our alone time. That's just a prerequisite of feeling well. And if we don't have alone time, and if we're cramped with other people that we don't want to be around necessarily, that presents a whole set of challenges that a lot of my patients have dealt with. So, so that would make sense also that if you're an empath and you're around someone, if it's, if it's your, a partner or a relative that you're close, if they're in the same proximity as you, if they're going through depression or anxiety, you're going to be feeling even that if that's not that's not who you are, but you're going to be feeling that depression and anxiety. Is that what you're saying? It's confusing. It's it's confusing. But the more you're around somebody, it, it's different if you have a mate and a primary relationship that you're you're living with them or you're very close to them. The more you're exposed to someone, the more you're open to absorbing their emotions and their moods. You know, as opposed to a friend, maybe you just zoom with or that you take walks with and you see once a week or once a month, that's very different. The dosage of the relationship goes up when you're actually living with somebody or you know, having family members live with you, then it, everything gets more intense for empaths. And that's been a real problem because it's very different from their ordinary lives where they've navigated the space to feel good. Now, suddenly you have all these people who are anxious and depressed and angry and don't know what to do with themselves and restless and trying to work and trying to be quiet. And it's just can be very chaotic during this time. So empaths have had to become very aware of that. And yes, we can absorb the energy and the emotions of people we love. That's one of the biggest challenges for me. And being around stress is a, is a big challenge for me as well. And so you have to learn the tools how not to absorb the stress, the anxiety, the depression, um, anger of the people around you. 
That's, that's part of the Empath Toolkit 101, and that's what's in the course, how not to take on the stress of people around you. And you, you keep learning. It's a process where I, I keep learning and I keep teaching my patients this. I mean, I have patients who come in in really bad shape because they've been empaths. They haven't learned to set boundaries. They haven't learned to practice self-care. They haven't learned meditation. They haven't learned you know, how, to, how to set limits and not be a people pleaser. And so they're tired or they're sick or they don't know what's wrong with them. Wrong with them. Well, and there's nothing wrong with you. Um, it's a very real way of being, being an empath. And traditional medicine misses it, you know, more times than not, because they don't have the vocabulary yet to really diagnose empath. And so that's why it's important to diagnose yourself, to know if you're an empath, and then take the steps that um, are in the course. And we'll go through them one by one in the course, you know, how to deal with empaths and health, how to deal with empaths in intimate relationships, how to deal with empaths in friendships, um, how to parent. If you're an empath parent and you have empathic children, how do you do that? Empaths in love. Um, so there are all kinds of uh, topics that an empath needs to deal with. And in addition, they need to learn how to deal with a toxic attraction with narcissists so they don't get attracted to these energy suckers that can keep you in there for decades. So oh, all of this don't is- don't get, me, don't get me started on those narcissists. Yes, because because empaths are yummy little gourmet nibbles for narcissists, right. are they not? Right, <laughs> right. They, they are. But the thing is, empaths who haven't been educated don't know this. And so they go right into the trap because they don't realize that narcissists present a false self in the beginning. That's very confusing. They're not who they seem to be. And that's very confusing because empaths are pure of heart and they're like, oh my goodness, this person is wonderful. It's my soulmate. It's my best friend. It's my, they're so kind. They're so generous. They're, you know, and, and then as time goes on, when you don't do things their way, they become cold, withholding, punishing, practice gaslighting, make you think you're crazy, beat down your self-esteem. So there's a whole narcissist syndrome that we go into in the course that the great thing about it is that it's predictable. You've seen it once, you've seen them all. Yeah. So some are worse than others, but you know they're very predictable and empaths need to be educated. And that's what the Empath Survival Guide course does. It educates empaths. And as an educated empath and somebody who can practice protection techniques, you can enjoy all the gifts of being an empath, the connection to intuition, the connection to nature, the connection to animals, the connection to your creativity and flow, and just being plugged into the light. You wanna be plugged into the light and say no to negativity in the darkness? Got to take those stands. Very important in this day and time with everything going on. And empathy, opening the heart, compassion, all of that will keep you plugged into the light, which we want. Exactly. And, you know, and this, the Empath Survival Guide that we're, we're offering to our wonderful listeners, the Empath Survival Guide, the online course and the book are really perfect tools for this time. And even if someone doesn't think that they're, an, they're like, oh, I don't know if I'm an empath, but this is a great tool for anyone. And I almost, I mean, part of it is, you know, it's your, it's your narcissist, you know, your narcissistic survival guide as well, because all of these things will help you. Um, I remember doing a podcast show when I first started doing my podcast and I, you know, uh, I did an interview with a, a self-proclaimed master narcissist. Yes. Um, out of England. And <laughs> I, I, you might know this person's, it's not their real name, but uh, anyway, this person, um, and I think it was part of therapy or court. I don't know why, really, why, but it was kind of like the magician who tells the secret, like how they cut the woman right. in half or, right? right? How they pull the rabbit out of their hat. So he was proceeding to say, this is what narcissists are. And 
these are the these are the um, the signs and the symptoms. And if you are in a relationship or you know of someone who is the, who is of my kind, which sounded like a vampire, and they are they're vampires. Um, he was just saying he was saying you will you will never fix me. I do not care how you feel. I do not care if I hurt your heart. I do not care. I have absolutely no empathy, which to me is the most frightening kind of human being, because if you lack empathy, you can do anything and have no guilty conscience about it. But that particular show got more, I, it's on YouTube and I, it, it's gotten hundreds of thousands of views and it was the most commented on uh, program that I've ever done. And because there were so many, mostly women who were victims, but so many people said, thank you for doing this because I thought I was crazy. He made me believe I was crazy. I thought I was um, jealous. I thought I was insecure. And now I'm realizing I was in a, a narcissistic, abusive relationship. That's There's right. Really a lot of victims. I mean, empaths and not, but they tend to like us empaths because we're, oh, they said they love me. Oh my goodness. They must love me. Well, and because you're, because empaths are naturally loving and kind and giving. And that's what they want. That's our nature. We, you know, have a lot of emotions. We have a lot of intensity, but our our nature, our basic nature is, is empathic. We are so empathic, we just absorb everything, which we have to learn how to deal with so we can enjoy our empathy. But if you, you know, as you know, I go into great detail in the book and the course, if you're attracted to narcissists, if you've had narcissistic parents, so that's who you imprinted on, you're going to need to know that. So you don't keep attracting narcissistic partners, narcissistic bosses, narcissistic friends. You know, patients come into me and they say, why do I have all these narcissists in my life? You have all of them because that's the issue that's up for you and that you need to work with that. And it's very, very doable, but it means shifting the configuration of your expectations in your heart, because these types of people, you can't win them over, like you just said. So if you've had a narcissistic parent and you keep getting narcissistic partners, the hope, the subliminal hope is that you're going to heal them and finally get the love you deserve. That's underneath everything. But that's not going to happen. I, I I know how it sort of sounds like a good idea, but it doesn't work that way. You're not going to fix them. <laughs> uh, well, and you're and you're you psychiatrist. You and you can't, like, okay. You, you can't heal the original parental relationship by keeping to attracting partners who are narcissists. So there are just certain basics you need to learn from the course so you could practice it. You know, in terms of my working with patients, I send them out there and I have them practice. You know, if when we were open, you know, I would have them go into the dating scene, see who they're attracted to, you know, and if they are attracted to who they think is a narcissist, really just go for it, but be a witness and, and grow and see and, and say no to that eventually. Because you want to say no, empaths and everyone really, needs to say no to anything that isn't of the light, anything that isn't of empathy, that isn't of caring, that isn't of compassion. I mean, we all have a dark side. I mean, that's for sure. But as long as we're working with it to the best of our ability, it doesn't have the power to take us over. And that's the key in terms of the empath survival guide. How do you survive as an empath? Just your conscious awareness and your desire to, to rise up from the low lower part of our nature and we all have it um that's enough you know and so you know learning how to set these limits practice these self-care techniques be aware of narcissists don't invest in people who aren't going to return your love don't just be a friend to somebody and not have them be a friend to you you know all of that you know that's what the empath survival guide is about and it's a skill set and the more you practice it the better you get at it so it takes a little bit less stretching and effort because you're familiar you meet this type of person like chronic talkers are just the bane of my existence 
I can't, I can't take too much talking. It's very overwhelming for me. Me too. Me too. Like, I hate it. I can't take it. And so for me to learn to interrupt and say, I'm so sorry, I've got to you know, interrupt you, um, but I've got to go over here or I've got to go to the bathroom. I, I've got to make an exit. But learning how to take care of myself in that way is very good. Other people, I want to make this clear, other people who are not, not introverted empaths love all the talking. You know, some of them, they love all the talking. So I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying I can't take it. You know, it's too much for my system. And if you're an empath and you don't like small talk, you don't like chronic talking, that's all fine. Just adapt yourself, be able to set limits and boundaries from a kind, firm place instead of feeling desperate about it or that there's something wrong with you or that you're not made right in some way and that you need to be ashamed of your abilities. None of that is true. None, none, none. Empaths are gorgeous, open-hearted people and I believe who are you know, ultimately gonna save the world, you know, the, the trait of empathy. And I, I believe so. I believe as well that we are, and we're the healers of the world. We're the that's healers it. of the world because we can feel. That, that's it. You don't want to be, a narcissist can wield power, but they can't heal. Mm. Not really. Mm. Um, yeah, they can wield power. That's what they're into, by the way. They say, my patients ask me, well, what are narcissists getting out of all this? Power. Power is an aphrodisiac. For some people, you know, it's well, they're feeding know. on your emotion. They're feeding yeah. on the emotion. And it doesn't matter what kind of emotion it is, the stronger the emotion is, the more they're they're feeding off of it. So if it's uh, heartache, pain, you know, confusion, um, distrust, uh, insecurity, all those things, that's, that's food right. for the narcissist. Now we're gonna get into how people can get for themselves, they can actually take your empath survival guide, the uh, online course, which is fantastic because this is jam packed with so many tools for, for everyone really, but especially for those that are the sensitive ones and the empaths of the world. Um, there's some amazing tools in here, but since you're a psychiatrist, um, I know you understand the, the narcissistic, the, the diagnosis of of, of narcissism. And I know that there are different levels, but what classically, is it my understanding that people that become narcissists and especially like psychopathic or sociolo psychologically narcissistic, you know, um, that something very traumatic happened to them at a very, very young age. Or, oh, some, some people think that, you know, some people are saying it's just, some researchers say it's genetic. Um, they say it, it's um, modeling where you have narcissistic parents. Some children model that. Um, it can be from trauma, it's thought, but nobody knows this for sure. Um, but one thing that, that I believe that role modeling is extremely important that we do, we mimic through the mirror neuron system, which is responsible for compassion, which empaths have like hyperactive mirror neuron <laughs> system <laughs> yeah. based on mimicking. And so when we see compassion, when we see an empathic act, we mimic that and we, we feel it, but the same is true for bad behavior. Now, in terms of, of mimicking it, if you have a father figure who you love and he's a narcissist, there's a part of you that wants to be like him. And, you know, that's not, it, it happens. And it, it's a uh, malignant narcissist is very hard to treat in psychotherapy. Let me just put it that way, because they always think the problem is you. They don't <laughs> right. Well, the even as a psychiatrist, I'm sure they come to say, they go, you know what? It's not me. It's you, Dr. Orloff. You are putting me in a box. <laughs> not, not necessarily. Well, it could be me, but it's usually the part. <laughs> right. It's her fault. It's his fault. It's never my fault. It's Look what you made off. me do. I love that one. Look right. what you made me do. <laughs> you ruined my life. You because of you did this and now you did this. You know, so it's all blame, shame, and not taking responsibility. So very limited uh, capabilities. And the the official term for it is empathy deficient disorder. Empathy oh. deficient. Like really wrap your mind around what that means. 
like what you said earlier about somebody who really doesn't have the empathy. It's hard for empaths to grasp that. And I, I'm, I'm dedicated to getting, helping them grasp it. It's so hard to grasp coming from where you're at, but you have to realize that there are people who are different than you. And people aren't all empaths. They're not all loving. They're not all wired neurologically to have empathy. So it's something that I'd like everyone to just try and think about. As I've had people get mad at me and say, we can heal anything with love. Why are you no. saying, <laughs> I, you know, I wish you were right. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, but some people don't like to hear that, which I understand. So go for it. Try to heal with love if you must, but learn from it, you know, really learn. As the, I've seen a lot of uh, women and men get battered by narcissistic partners and, and suffer horribly over the years. And escaping that is like, recovering from PTSD. It is recovering from PTSD to begin a new life and to start over again. It's, it's a big price to pay being with somebody like that. And so something to consider, but you no, know, my spiritual teacher said, there's no wrong path. There's just some paths are more painful than others. Mm. That's deep. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Just learn whatever path you choose, learn from it. That the point of the Empath Survival Guide online course is to make it easier for you, to show you the pitfalls of the path, to show you how to navigate them, to show you how to not absorb all the suffering of the world and still have an open, beautiful heart and a beautiful life. You see, so, you know, I'm, I'm very passionate about giving you those skills so you can feel the joys of being an empath. I wouldn't change anything for the world. No, I'm really sensitive. <laughs> so beautifully so, Dr. Orloff. Beautifully so. Thank you. Well, let's give the, let's give our, our wonderful listeners um, a, a way for them to dive into this material and take this journey along, you know, with you, Dr. Judith Orloff. It's the Empath Survival Guide. And if you yourself would like to get the uh, Empath Survival Guide online course, if you'd like to take that with Dr. Judith Orloff and also get her book, her ebook, the Empath Survival Guide, you can do that by just clicking the link in the show notes. It's all right there. Immediate access. You get to take this course and improve your well-being through yourself, your relationship with yourself, your relationship with others, your relationship and your non-relationship with the narcissist. You're going to know who they are, where they are, and how to get rid of them, and and also how to survive um, being a beautiful empath and celebrate that. I would love for you, Dr. Orloff, if you could go through what people are going to experience once they take the Empath Survival Guide, the online course, once they jump into this material, um, let's go through it. There's like, what, eight hours of, of, of video learning sessions from you. Why don't you explain a little bit about that? Yes, there are eight modules and you could, of course, watch them at your convenience um, where I go through every aspect of being an empath that you're gonna confront in yourself and it offers strategies to deal with whatever challenges that you're facing with that category. For instance, um, you'll take a, a 20 question self-assessment test. Are you an empath? How much of an empath are you? Are you a full-fledged empath? I'll go through the questions. You'll be able to self-diagnose yourself, which is pretty simple because we have a lot of traits in common. So you'll know then. So if you go to your you're, you're a medical practitioner. If you go to your acupuncturist, you'll know you're an empath. I mean, this is number one. You first have to know. And then the other modules, I go through different topics, empaths and health. Now, how is your health today? Are you tired? Are you feeling GI symptoms? Are you feeling uh, depleted or in pain? What, what, How's your body right now? And then you have to ask yourself, how much of this am I absorbing from the world or other people or my, my girlfriend's back pain or my friend's headache? Am I taking all this on? You have to start asking yourself that. So the, 
The first module, the empaths and health, you'll learn how to identify what's going on in your body, what's your baseline, and how to stop absorbing the symptoms of other people. You don't want to do that. It's not going to help you. And then there's a module on empaths and emotions. What emotions are you taking on from other people? The anxiety, the depression, or during the pandemic, what are you picking up from the collective? What are you picking up from cable news um, or an addiction to cable news, you know, which can be a lot of draining energy. And so it will help you go through your emotional life. What emotions do you tend to pick up? Because people tend to be more susceptible to one than another they have emotional triggers so we'll go through emotional triggers what triggers you what gets you off your center what makes you lose your your power you know to find out is it somebody getting angry at you um is it lack of self-esteem is it feeling that you can't be successful um is it poor health what are your triggers so that you could begin to heal and once you know your triggers and you begin to heal them you're less apt to absorb that from other people or the world. So that's a primary law, Empath 101. What you heal in yourself, you won't absorb from other people. So I mean, I love that because that means we're all part of the healing process as we become awakened to empaths. And then we'll have empaths. There's a module in empaths and relationships. You know, who is your ideal mate? I go through different types. Do you want to be with an empath if you're an empath? Do you want to be with a non-empath, such as a rock, somebody who's steady and present but doesn't absorb the energy of others and is, you know, doesn't feel things in the way you do? You know, that's my personal preference because two of me would be too much. <laughs> it's nice not to have another me, to have somebody who doesn't absorb or process the world in the same way that I do. And it grounds me, it centers me, and he loves it, you know, because he doesn't, you know, suffer the way I suffer when I do. Um, and so he's very grounded and so able to support, you know, there, there's a certain degree of suffering in life, so it doesn't all go away, but it does considerably lessen. And so you'll see who your ideal partner is if you're an empath, you'll see, you um, if you're single and you want a soulmate, but you're not finding one um, and you're attracted to unavailable people, that's a pattern that we'll go through in the module. Because that's very common with empaths because when someone's unavailable, you don't have to get into the, the challenges of intimacy, which are many for empaths. Being an empath in a relationship is a particular path. And there are particular challenges that come up that you're gonna need to deal with that I'll guide you through in the module. So there's a lot of good stuff in the relationship module. Um, and then if you're a parent, how do you be an empathic parent without getting overwhelmed with keeping your sanity? How do you raise empathic children, which is such an important topic. You know, if, when I was a little girl and I was empathic and I was picking things up and intuitive, if I had parents that said, oh, this is wonderful, let me help you. Let me help you ground yourself. Let me help you center yourself. This is a wonderful trait. I didn't have that. I had, don't ever mention this in my house again. So I grew up ashamed and thinking there was something wrong with me. So this module on parenting is so important. So you can help those little empath souls and you can help them grow up to be proud of themselves and, and beautiful, sensitive, loving, and strong people. All right. And then there's empaths and the earth, which is so important that I believe that sensitive, loving, caring people are guardians of the earth as we feel the earth. It's not an issue. You know, we feel the earth. We feel the earth is our body and our body is the earth. It's not an issue we debate. It's something that it's just part of our perception. And when you have that perception, you want to take care of Mother Earth and be her guardian as we're the ones that are fit to do it. The ones that are in denial with their minds about what's happening to the Earth are causing great damage. 
So your connection to the earth, your connection to animals, you could be a plant empath, which we'll go over, um, an animal empath where you commune and know how animals are feeling, animals are attracted to you, um, an earth empath who feels the energy of the earth, you know, be it earthquakes or beautiful blooming of the spring. You can feel the blooming of the spring in your body and take in all that positive healing energy. And so there's there's a beautiful side to being an empath and there's a challenging side and each module will go through it all. And then you'll have journaling practices and practices that you're gonna do in between the modules you know, to help you really become an empath who's comfortable in his or her own skin. You know, not somebody who's running scared or overwhelmed all the time or just wants to stay home because it's just too much to go out. I mean, there will be times where you want to stay home and it's too much to go out. I mean, that's that's just going to happen. But there will be times where you will embrace the world and be quite joyous out there, you know, and, and, and learn how to navigate the difficulties. So you're, you, you, you meet somebody in a store you're not tuning into them and finding out what's going on inside them. You don't want to do that. You, know, you want to mind your own business, stay in your own lane, put up your protective bubble and don't get involved in other people's business. So that we'll, we'll talk a lot about that. And then there's a chapter on narcissists, a module on narcissists and, and other energy vampires. And, and how do you handle these individuals? And I'll go through different types because they're different strategies to use for each. So I'm gonna give you a game plan for dealing with the major drainers. And then you have to go out and practice what is there in the course and put it into action. You know, and then you'll see that it works and you'll start to feel much, much more empowered. This is this is so much more than like a you know a tool a toolkit. This is like your nav man or your you know your little when you when you need to get to a, a someplace and you're not certain how how to get there, what streets to take. When you have something like this from Dr. Judith Orloff, the Empath Survival Guide, uh, the pack, which is the online course and also the book, you're going to be getting the um, Empath Survival Guide uh, book as well, so that you can. Uh, read through that and go through that as you're going through the course. But what I love about it is that it's a navigational system to get you to, and it, and it's, you can apply this to any aspect of your life. So this navigational system that you're going to be participating in and you can take it, you know, you can do it once a day or once a week, if you wanted to do, you know, each module. But what I love about it is that you can apply it towards your relationships you can apply it toward your business, which is really, I find that a lot of empaths have stumbling blocks around business because they're, uh, they, they want to stay inside, right? They, they want to stay inside, but they need to get out there. They need to let people know who they are and what, what their business is. But at the same time, those, those overwhelming emotions that they have um, and wanting to be a little bit reclusive uh, <laughs> is is a challenge. And so this is kind of like a great way to approach that. So for business, for relationships, for our health, because empaths are usually the last people to take care of themselves, They're taking care of everybody else, making sure everything else is okay, right? But right. Uh, the health of ourselves, and, and, and that's very, very important, but also our relationship with ourselves and how we see ourselves. I, like you, when I was really young, um, I didn't get that, oh my goodness, you're, you know, you know, you're an empath. They, they didn't even have that word back then, you know, right, it was, right. it was, uh, you know, quit being, you know, goddamn sensitive. You're too sensitive. And I couldn't understand that ever because I always thought in my head, how can you be too sensitive? But it was looked upon as a negative trait, right? right, right. And so that wasn't encouraged. I still kept that. I, I'm, I've always been in, you know, super sensitive and intuitive, but it wasn't right. celebrated. And now we want to make sure that for the next generation, we do celebrate that. But there's some things that we need to know to, to tell them. And That's to tell right. them about the big bad wolf narcissist in life, <laughs> exactly, too. 
Yes, so that empaths know how to navigate the world and feel confident instead of just feel bereft and overwhelmed and on sensory overload all the time. Um, and learning how to practice self-care, which is such a good thing, is learning how to take care of yourself, learning how to say no if you're too tired to go out. You know, if you've made a plan and you just are too tired to go out, you have to be prepared to disappoint somebody, which is very hard for empaths. You know, to say, I'm sorry, can we make it next week? I'm just too tired to go out or I need quiet time. I need to decrease stimulation. And so to learn how to take care of yourself in that way is just a gorgeous thing to do. And then take your bath, light your candles, go into meditation, go to sleep, play with your animals, don't talk to anyone, you know, just be by yourself or with spirit. You know, empaths are very spiritual. Um, there's a, a module on empaths and spirituality where you could connect to something greater than yourself and what that means. You know, in terms of connecting to nature and spirit and love and compassion, and you, in, in your quiet time, you can really spend time with that and feel how ecstatic those forces are. But you can give that as a gift to yourself. Empaths perceive the world through energy, you know, to a great, great part. And so you can choose what you focus on. And so you, you have every right to focus on all the positive and refuel yourself in your quiet moments. So when empaths learn how to do this, it's just you know, really a wonderful self-care tool. And putting the hand on the heart when you start getting anxious or you start getting feeling drained, put the hand on the heart immediately. You know, close your eyes or at least put your hand on your heart and focus on something loving, something in nature, something in your heart that makes you happy. And you can shift the energy quickly. And empaths need to learn how to shift the energy quickly. And that's what this online course is all about. Oh, my goodness. I am so happy that we are offering this to our wonderful listeners. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's an incredible package. And from such a beautiful soul uh, as you, Judith, I just am so honored that you have made this available to our wonderful listeners. And it's a, a package that uh, not only is gonna be amazing for themselves, but think of it as a gift, yes, to yourself, but also a gift to the, your loved ones. This is a gift that once you receive it and you, you do dive into the course and uh, take the guided practices and the weekly practices that are in this and all watch all of the different modules and read the book, you're gonna be able to engage with your family and loved ones in a real positive way. And that has that ripple effect, right? What, how you behave and how you treat others and yourself has a ripple effect with the people around you. Being an empath should be celebrated. Being an empath should be something that, you know, that you're proud of and not like when both Judith and I were little and we had to be like walking around going, what's wrong with me? <laughs> What did I do? What did I do wrong? This is a great way to celebrate that and to celebrate your own unique gifts and find out more about who you are in this world. Now, Judith, we do, we still have a little bit of time. So um, I wanted to get into a bit more on the online course that people are going to be uh, jumping into and, and participating in. There are, there's a, an opportunity for them also to do personal journaling. And this is, I find this is really important for empaths. We don't sometimes take the time to do that. But can you talk about that, the importance of this? Oh, it's so important to actually write. I prefer handwriting. I, I love handwriting because it connects right to my heart when I write in my journal. Um, and it's about writing about your empath needs related to the module. What resistances are you having? What blocks do you have? What fears do you have? What memories do you have? What energies are you sensing that are either positive or, or uncomfortable with regard to health or relationships or work? You know, what are my optimal needs and how can I meet them? Because the whole point of this course is to find strategies to have your needs met. It's not just to feel uncomfortable, it's to really crystallize, what are my needs at work? There's a chapter on empaths and work. What is the ideal job for me? Do I wanna journal about that 
that, which would be wonderful. Um, do I want to be in an office environment? Do I want to have a home office, which empaths often prefer? Do I want to work via Zoom versus going in the office, which many of my empath patients are considering now since they've been at home for a year doing their job on Zoom and they prefer it? You know, or do you prefer the, the socialization of going into the office? So there's a module on work and you can journal about that get it out. And a lot of times when you journal, old ideas that are outdated come up, like why I can't do that, why I, I don't deserve to make so much money, why I don't deserve to have a, a job that's perfect for me, why do I have to get into a miserable job and stay there? Now, did you have role models that did that? So it's really a way, journaling is a way to clear out the old and bring in the new and it's very solution oriented and creative. I, I journal and I doodle and I draw and I write poems and I write insights and I write fears. So it's, it's if you let yourself go with it instead of it just being a linear experience, journaling can bring out so much in you that that you need to have come out. You don't want it like we, we, Christine and I both went through the experience of being children who were squashed, to have the empathy squashed. The journal is the opportunity to have the empathy come out and be seen, to be, have, be heard, to have a word, to have a written word, to have testimony that this is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with you. So the journal is, is your way to get to those places through writing or through typing on the computer or through, you know, some people use audio and they have an audio recorder. That's okay too. It, it depends what you resonate the most with in terms of journaling. I, I love this because it's, it, it's empowering as well. And it, and when you're thinking about like some people will say, well, um, you know, it's easy for them to get a gym membership to work out their body, right? Or, or they'll, they'll get a self-help you know, book that they'll get it and then it'll sit on the shelf and they won't use it. This is something that people can actually really jump into. And I still, I, I'm equating it to using it for, um, for business because there's so many people that are entrepreneurs and they're just starting out. Maybe because with COVID they've uh, either lost their job or their hours have been greatly reduced or they've been hit financially because they had their own like brick and mortar store. And it's, you know, my goodness, they've been hit financially. And right now there's a great renaissance, Judith, of people saying, you know what? I want to do something positive for the world. I want to okay. share my wisdom. I want to share my passion, my my heart. I see it. I'm I'm a podcast coach and I see, especially women, I see women that are in their 50s, 60s, 70s. They're like, you know what? I got to get out and save this planet. I got to get out and help people. And, <laughs> and they're finally coming into their power. But this is a great resource to tap into your intuition, to tap into those, your innate gifts, your intuition, your healing, all of those things to enhance them so that when you do communicate what it is that you do, you know, half of what I've done in years and years of being on broadcast journalist, you know, being on air, People can't see me, but they can feel me. Right. I've had time and time again, listeners who've commented when I've got to see them and, and meet them in person, they have said, you know what? I totally could feel you, Christine. I felt your intention. And that to me is worth a million bucks. Oh, that, yeah. means, oh, yeah. that means that what's coming from my heart is being expressed and they're feeling it in their car, you know, if they're driving on a freeway or wherever. And that means the world to me. So I really encourage people to, to, to get this package and to dive into it, to take the online course with Dr. Judith Orloff for whatever it is that you want to do, if it's for relationship or for your, your health or your relationship with yourself, but also think about how it can improve and enhance your business Think about how your communication will change after this, how you communicate with the world and how, because it's all energy, how you communicate with the world reflects in how the world communicates with you. So this is so beautiful. And if you yourself would like to get the uh, Empath Survival Guide online course, if you'd like to take that with Dr. Judith Orloff and also get her book, her ebook, The Empath Survival Guide, 
You can do that by just clicking the link in the show notes. It's all right there. Immediate access. Doc, what, so with, I know in your practice and with all of the wonderful work you've done with this online course, you've gotten feedback from, from people who have taken the course. Can you let us know any stories? I love good stories. Any, any wonderful reports back from people? Oh, I, I am blessed with getting wonderful reports every day from people. <laughs> and it's, it just so warms my heart. I mean, I get reports such as, I always thought there was something wrong with me and now I know there isn't. I finally feel sane. You know, which is a huge relief if you've lived, you know, oh, how, however many years, 70, 80, 90 years, I get letters from all ages. I get letters from teenagers who are teaching their sisters and brothers about themselves and being an empath. Now, I have families who have taken the course. I've had couples who have taken the course. I've had entrepreneurs who have taken the course, or, or if you want to change the kind of work you do or the format of the work you know what what are the ideal jobs for empaths you know the, that module has been very helpful to people make that jump to something that is a good fit you know and when a job is a good fit it's very different than having to drag yourself somewhere and suffer all day basically and wait until you, you can't wait to get home that feeling and that's not that you want to live life to the fullest so I have people who are able to make that shift as a result of the course. Um, I've had many people write me about how their health has improved because they've learned strategies not to take on their mother's stress, let's say. You know, there are, uh, you know so many people who are taking care of ailing parents now, and it's extremely stressful. I went through that with my own parents, and I know what that's like, that takes a lot out of you. And they're not always agreeable or even nice sometimes, you know, it's a very difficult situation. So, you know, I've had people take the course when they're taking care of their parents and they, they love their parents, but it's difficult, you know, difficult to do that. And, and it's a sacred act to help the parents in the, the uh, old age and then make the transition you know, into, into uh, death or the next place we go. Um, but you need to have strategies so you don't absorb all their stuff and you're able to delegate and not micromanage. And there, there's a whole skill set to caretaking and empathy and what healthy giving is. And so you'll learn that from the course. Um, and all kinds of practical situations, people write me about the empathic parents who are helping the children, you know, giving the children the identity of being a strong and sensitive boy, being a, a strong and sensitive girl. You know, they're, they're given tools where it makes their parenting easier. I've had children grow up who were parented by those kinds of parents who have turned into the most beautiful people where it's just part of their nature. It's not for us, it's a big deal. And it is a big deal to, to become an empath. But when you grow up with that supported as this module will do, it's just a natural way of being. So mm -hmm. they don't do you know, the, the intensity of the struggle that I went through coming to grips with it and integrating being an empath as a, a medical, you know, as a physician, a psychiatrist, and, you know, in my personal life, it's, I've had to mix medicines, I've had to integrate and bring things together and find my voice. And so that's, it, it's different, though, if, if you if you're a parent, and you do the module on parenting and raising empathic children, and you give your children those tools from the beginning, then their path is a little different than mine was and perhaps yours was. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I love you. I think I'm so, so honored to, to know you and also to bring you to our wonderful listeners to share your wisdom and your heart. I always, every time I talk to you, my, I, 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 I leave, it's like I got my heart medicine for the day. You know, <laughs> like I, I know, I know, because I'll continue today. I'll continue my day with just this really lovely, like, oh, I got my heart medicine from from Judith today. So, um, and I know that our wonderful listeners are going to feel the same when they when they get this material. I'm excited and to offer this to them, and um, just so grateful to you, um, Dr. Orloff, for all the work that you do. I'm going to throw out the number again for those folks. I know I can hear in the zeitgeist of 
of people going, give me the number, give me the number. Um, if you would like to have this be a part of your life and share this with your loved ones, you know, do it doesn't have to be just you alone. Maybe you and your spouse, you and your uh, partner, you and your your maybe your teenager. This would be wonderful material to go through with you and your teen. They're going through a lot right now. Uh, the future, we there's big question marks and the stress and anxiety and all of that, this is a great, great teaching tool for them as well, how to navigate life as an empath. The Empath Survival Pack, it's yours at this number. Call right now, 818-985-5735. You get the entire online course. There are eight, what do we have? Was it eight video modules, correct? Yes, eight, eight plus the guided journaling. Um, and the individual work, um, and um, also their um, continuing medical um, units, continuing education units for uh, nurses and social workers and uh, marriage and family therapists. And all the sessions are downloadable and you get transcripts as well. So you might be somebody who likes to absorb material through videos uh, or reading it. You can do that. You also get a copy of Dr. Orloff's book, The Empath Survival Guide, you get the whole kit and caboodle. And if you yourself would like to get the uh, Empath Survival Guide online course, if you'd like to take that with Dr. Judith Orloff and also get her book, her ebook, The Empath Survival Guide, you can do that by just clicking the link in the show notes. It's all right there, immediate access. You get to take this course and improve your well-being through yourself, your relationship with yourself, your relationship with others, your relationship and your non-relationship with the narcissist. You're going to know who they are, where they are, and how to get rid of them, and, and also how to survive um, being a beautiful empath and celebrate that. Celebrate your empathicness. <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> it is now, right? Right. It's totally a word. It's a beautiful word. Your empath self, your empathness, your empath nature. We love it and we encourage it and we celebrate it. And Dr. Or Orloff, why don't you throw out your um, website too? We'll put a link in the show notes for that as well. My website is www.drjudithorloff.com. Dr. Judith Orloff.com. Beautiful. I'll make sure we put that in the show notes as well. And thank you again so very much. Thank you also, wonderful listeners and viewers. Uh, again, if you want more information about this podcast, go to out of the box with Christine.com. That's out of the box with Christine.com. Until next time, be good to yourself and celebrate your empathy. I'm going to get a big E with a cape. <laughs> thank you so much, Judith. Oh, you're so welcome. It's, it was just beautiful.